What's up, my good friends? We're doing something different. I'm not in front of my bookshelves. I'm in my room, and um, my new computer has messed with the blur. So hopefully um, you can't see exactly how messy my room is, uh, but you know, you know how it is. So I was actually tagged to do the um, indie fantasy book tag, and um, or the Indie Fantasy Reader Book Tag is what it's called. Now, regardless of what I think about indie books, or what you think I think about indie books, or what certain booktubers think I think about indie books, or <laughs> things I have said about independent publishing that certain booktubers have misinterpreted, I read indie books. And I actually read a lot of indie fantasy books. Now, there's some confusion as to what an indie book actually is. Oftentimes you'll hear the word indie, um, or like an indie press, independent publishing. An indie book is not from an independent press. An independent press is still a traditional publisher. An indie book specifically refers to a self-published book. And so it comes from the term independent, obviously, the author puts it out independently of any press. They do it themselves. So those are the books I'm gonna be talking about. Roll that intro. So first question, what got me into reading indie fantasy? This is kind of an interesting story. It starts in 2019. Um, I guess this would be a fantasy book. It depends on whether you classify paranormal as fantasy, but I met a self-published author doing what she was calling a book signing at a cotton patch when I was eating there with my parents and brother. And I didn't know a whole lot about self-publishing at that point. I, I just knew it was an option and I had a friend that had done it and I've read some of her books, not really my thing, they're witchy, but it's, it's more like a magical realism type thing. I don't like those. But the book I read that the author had there was called Unspeakable Acts. It is the worst book I've ever read. So that did not put a good taste in my mouth for self-publishing. It is what it is. That book was basically like Fifty Shades of Grey meets The Hardy Boys, and it had the worst writing I've ever seen. But hey, middle-aged woman living her dream, so. What is my favorite thing about indie fantasy? The covers. I love the book covers, especially ones done by Felix Ortiz. Um, every now and then I will just scroll through Amazon to find some indie books. Um, sometimes I'll get on Instagram and look. So definitely the covers are my favorite thing about indie books. What is my favorite indie fantasy book slash series? Seasons of Albedone is my favorite independent fantasy book. And I would say it's my favorite series, but the follow-up novel, A Contract in Stolforn, was really bad. Like, the story was all over the place. The character, like, the main character was interesting, but... It just the conflict was really nebulous and it was just bad so um the scenes were entertaining which is why i made it through it but i mean the story was just a mess the worst thing about that book was the story but yes seasons and alvadone my favorite indie book not the best indie book i've ever read but my favorite all right what is one high priority fantasy on my tbr and bound in the broken <laughs> I will probably read that in October because I'm a sucker for dragons. I also want to read the other one, Ascendant, I think is what it's called. I love the cover for Ascendant. So that's another one, but definitely The Bound and the Broken, especially since the ice just came out. And speaking of covers, I mean, that's Cahill's covers are probably some of my favorite, like all of book covers. I really like the minimalist aspect of them and I just think they're cool. So let me see, where do I, f number five, where do I find out about indie fantasy books? Twitter mostly, or X nowadays. But Twitter, um, just randomly on Amazon, and Felix Ortiz's Instagram. I found a really cool one, which I'll put right there. 
look at that cover. That's pretty awesome, right? They said they were going for a uh, game of, no, 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 for a Wheel of Time style. So that's where I found that one. I like it. What book would you recommend to someone just starting to read indie fantasy? <sighs> so uh, that's a hard one because indie fantasy is a little out there. I often describe it as um, an acquired taste because a lot of the stories are not that well written. Um, I'm saying stories, but I mean, a lot of the books are not that well written. The stories are not really coherent, but that doesn't mean they're not entertaining. So, uh, Voice of War by Zach Argyle, like put my beef with Argyle aside, his book's really easy. And um, yeah, it's pretty typical self-pub, it's decent. Um, definitely some amateurish mistakes in there, but uh, yeah. Or maybe um, Andrew Watson's book, if you're not a huge like modern fantasy per person, if you kind of like a different setting, Andrew Watson's book. God, what was that called? Harbinger of Justice. That's a good one to get into. It is not that well written. It's not that great story structure. But um, I honestly wouldn't recommend somebody getting into self-published fantasy unless they're pretty well versed in the fantasy genre already. Like you got to tackle trad before you can get to self-pub and like really take it in because it, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot to take in sometimes. All right. What is my favorite indie fantasy cover? That one. <laughs> That's my favorite one. I love it so much. It's, um, it's Philip Chase's book. Obviously the title's escaping me, but it's the purple one right there. So how do I approach reading? Do I approach reading or reviewing um, self-pub slash indie differently than traditionally published? And the answer to that is no. And that's when I often get myself, or I get myself into trouble. I don't. It's other booktubers get on to me for being disrespectful, but my tone is sardonic. Um, it's harsh for everything. And if indie authors want to be taken seriously, why wouldn't I treat them the same way I treat traditionally published authors, which is, I don't hold my tongue. And at the same time, talking about a book, not talking about an author, unless you attack me on Twitter, then I'll talk about you. All right. What is an upcoming indie fantasy release I'm looking forward to? Well, before today, I would have said The Ice by... Ryan Cahill, but I'm going to go ahead and put um, the third book in the series because I think it's a trilogy and I don't know the name of the series, but that Wheel of Time cover, that's the one I'm going to put. Um, what indie fantasy writer would I choose to write my story? None. I'd write my own story. And Eleven, what is an indie fantasy more people need to read? Seasons of Albodone. I've been saying that for so long. That is so underappreciated on booktube. It's so well written. And I know it's not going to appeal to everybody. It's like a vignette novella style. Four seasons, four different stories. Uh, not really novella linked, more like a novelette. Like, you know, 15,000 words each. Kind of the size of James Joyce's The Dead. Each, each um and they tell kind of a continuous story of this place called Albedone and how it's falling apart. And the cover does this novel a huge disservice because the cover is whimsical and happy and fun. And, you know, that sets us up for expectations. Yet all of a sudden I'm reading La 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 and a girl gets her throat cut or like a child explodes. Like it's pretty dark. It's like a Grimm's fairy tale type thing. Um, but just try it out. It's on Kindle Unlimited, so if you read a lot of self-pub, you should have Kindle Unlimited. It's $10 a month. Like, get it. But just try it. Read the first part. A Contract in Soul, Thorn, in Soul Thorn, its sequel, is not, not great. This It just has a terrible story. But the authors can write. And they're screenwriters, which I don't think is an accident that screenwriters can actually write. So... 
that's it for me. Hopefully you found some good book recs and um, I'm not going to tag anybody. I'm not going to mention who tagged me because I feel like I'm probably going to get some backlash for this um, <laughs> because there's preconceived notions about what I think of self-published stuff and authors and I don't know, people are going to be jerks and um, I'm here for it. I also got new glasses and I really like them. It's a whole new world in these things. See you guys. Oh,